Danny, welcome to Wealth Talk today. Oh, thanks, Christian. It, Danny, it's great to have you with us. And you're one of our founder members who July, uh, joined back in July 2019. So we are pretty much at two years into your journey. I know that it's gone so, so it feels like a really long journey in a way, just because so much has happened. But at the same time, it's gone really quickly. Yeah. And you have been a fantastic contributor uh, every step of the way, Danny. So we've really enjoyed seeing your journey and uh, we're going to hear all about it today. So what we're going to do is walk through the recurring revenue roadmap, which obviously is our nine step process to help members move from a place of financial insecurity onwards towards financial independence. We know that journey takes on average five years. So you're two years in, Danny. And uh, let's begin at the beginning then. So step one is all about mindset. And um, we always ask our members to, to really kind of dial into their reason why, you know, why is it important to build wealth? And what's motivating you? So was there a particular catalyst or a point that you can think back to Danny, where you decided that you were ready to take some action? Yeah, I think not one huge catalyst like a lot of people have. But growing up, I saw how hard my mum was working and you know didn't see her much because of the hours that she was putting in so it was something you know that we were really pushed I guess to look at what we were going to do with our careers and we were asked as you know you get asked what do you want to be when you grow up and that changed in very early years from wanting to be a vet at some point I think I was about five six I think I was about seven when my answer changed to I just want to earn more money than mum. Um, and I think from there, it was always just chasing the money. And I think that's why I've been in sales for over 20 years. So I ended up quitting college within a few months because I was selling double glazing part time and it was going really well and realised how much I could be earning at 16. So went from there and then, you know, did that for a while. And then I was like, right, what do I need to do next? And, you know, made a very conscious decision to get into advertising, then made a very conscious decision to get into IT sales. And now I've been in MarTech sales for over 13 years. Um, So the money has always been very important. But I think when you then start to realise that the amount of time I spend working now, and, you know, yes, I have a very good salary and that affords me a nice lifestyle. What's my retirement going to look like? You know, my pension alone is not going to afford me the lifestyle I want. And if you think about the amount of free time you expect to have once you retire, you think, well, how much money? I'm going to need a lot more money than I have now. I'm going to need a lot more disposable income to live that nice lifestyle. Um, So it's just having, I guess, that sense of security not only for now, but for the future as well. I don't ever want to be in a position where, you know, we're struggling or can't help the kids out with something and, you know, should they need it. Yeah. And when we launched Wealth Builders Membership back in 2019, Danny, it was called the Foundation Programme back then. Okay. Can you remember what attracted you to join the programme and, and why you decided to work with Wealth Builders? Yeah, so I came across you... Um, because of SAS. So my property mentor, Carol, um, mentioned SAS pensions to me. I'd never, ever heard of it. And so that's how I came across Wealth Builders. And I was definitely one of those people. I was always looking for that thing to invest in that would you know, add that layer of security and give that extra income. And I had made so many mistakes. And I think that for me was really frustrating I was wanting to do the right things I was wanting to invest I was wanting to do that um but there's so much false wrong information out there with and people with not the right ethics let's say (laughs) that you end up you can make some costly mistakes and I definitely did that so finally I just felt once I looked at and I'd, I'd heard of you from Escape the Rat Race um I'd I worked in London and it was one of those things I'd meant to go along to and never had. So your name was familiar. And then when I looked into Kevin, I just felt that this was finally a place that A, wasn't just focusing on one source of income. Like for me, 
yes, I'm interested in lots of things. I want more than one in stream of income. And so many things out there just focus on property or just focused on investments. And this was that really holistic approach that I was looking for and um, structured with the detail. And I felt with the right people leading it that it wasn't just going to be another one of those things where you just kept being up- upsold to something else to learn the next bit of information. Great. So that's step one. You connected with your why. You also created your family wealth business name and logo, which was really great. So that moves us into step two then, Danny, which we call the foundation. So this is really about getting crystal clear on how big the gap is from where you are to where you want to get to. So how much asset income you actually need in order to become financially independent. And um, can you remember, obviously, where you were right at the beginning? And, um, you know, where are you down the journey now? So um, I was at the insecurity level and I still am. (laughs) So, you know, two years into the journey, I have built that asset wealth. I have built income, but it's not where it needs to be yet. However, what I would say is that I'm completely certain that I will reach security and independence. And for those that are familiar with the programme will understand those levels, but um, it does take time. And I think you've just got to learn to enjoy the journey. I see so many people start getting into you know the self-development and the focus on wanting to grow wealth and suddenly they decide that they hate their day job and they are you know going to throw everything into it and that can work but you know when I'm working full-time I've got a family and everything else to think about there has to be a balance otherwise you're just going to burn out and you do need to enjoy the journey it's not always going to be easy so give yourself a break make sure you're having time to recharge and so that you can go again and just be really clear as you say with that why keep connecting with that and it will keep you going yeah yeah you're making great progress and um we know that you have to give wealth building time And that's the key is not giving up, continuing. So yeah, great progress so far. So that moves us into step three then, Danny, which is all about putting a strong roof in place. And um, were you able to review the roof when you joined Danny? And um, have you started, you know, putting some of those things into place now? Yeah. So the thing I did straight away was change the home ownership status. So Again, I couldn't, as someone who was proactively always looking for this type of information, um, that was a revelation. So change, the, and it's very, very easy for anyone to do. It's free. All you need to do is fill in a form. So it's changing from, and I don't, I don't know if I get this around the right way, so it's tenants in, you change from joint tenants to tenants in common. I think that's the right way. <laughs> and yeah, so that was really easy literally just took a form and I shared that link with so many people I knew to just say this is something you have to do and and I've always had wills in place I've always had lots of insurance in place so um but the will turns out it wasn't exactly where it needed to be so in the process it's taken me a little while it's pretty much written up I just need to sort some things out in regards to the kids um power of attorney and that sort of thing but almost there with getting really solid wills in place excellent so that's stage one then danny so that's you know having a strong foundation really being clear on where you are right now where you want to get to giving you that peace of mind knowing that everything is protected you've reviewed your outgoings you're ready now to move in stage two which is all about building knowledge and that step four which is assets so we know there are seven different assets which we call pillars and which did you already have some experience with when you joined Danny and what other pillars have you been able to utilize since? So when I joined I had just started my property journey and property training so that was something that I was in the early days of so that was one um, as I mentioned at the beginning how I came about Wealth Builders was because of the SAS pension so I've also done that my SAS is ready invested and ready to um, put into investments so that is the initial strategy for my SAS 
I will be looking at other ways of leveraging that for my property pillar. Um, business. So I set up a business um, and within that business, I'm building IP. So there's a course that is launching later this year. My book is half written and um, I've been doing lots of podcasts and learning social media um, and that has led to a JV relationship that is going to be critical I think in helping me launch my course later this year in terms of leveraging their existing mailing list it's a training company and they feel that the course which is all around productivity um, is going to be really helpful for their students and audience fantastic did you mention home capacity there Oh, no, I didn't. No, yes, home capacity <laughs> as well. So, yeah, home capacity um, took some of the equity out of the home to fund the property um, pillar. So one, two, three, four, five. I think at least five pillars there. Yes. In play. Yeah, if if not six. But yeah. um, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty good effort there, Danny. So, all right, next step then in stage two is about leverage. So leverage is key to wealth building. And it isn't necessarily always financial leverage, but it could be intellectual leverage or relationship leverage, system leverage or time leverage. So can you provide us with an example of how you have brought leverage into play to help build your wealth? Yeah, so um, I guess home capacity is one of those leverage that financially to help build my wealth um, in the property pillar. Um, and one of our early conversations turned into us looking at the IP side of things so it was coaching was always something I was very interested in as a and as you know I was a goal mapping coach also when I came to wealth builders um but I always wanted to create something of my own but I just wasn't sure on what it is and all it took was you asking me one question which was what does everyone say to you what's the one thing people come to you on and it was um, then suddenly really, really obvious and clear. And I <laughs> didn't know why I hadn't thought of it before. Um, but everything happens for a reason. Obviously, the time was right then for me to really think about building my IP, which is around that productivity um, side of things and you know, managing lots of roles and commitments and hats and <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Um, so, yeah, so that has that's in progress still it has been a longer journey than I expected as most things are but as I say we I'm now on a strong trajectory to launch in September and so that's very exciting yeah Yeah. so good use of uh, intellectual leverage there of what you already knew what you were already interested in what you were good at and then obviously your relationship with wealth builders and us having that chat um, but uh, leveraging now further relationships because uh, I believe that's leading to you having a, an opportunity to speak in front of quite a large crowd later this year to promote your business. Yeah. yeah, so I guess that's where the JV element comes in. So that is yeah leveraging an existing relationship I had with a training company and them seeing what I was building and them resonating with it and thinking it would be of benefit. So Yes, the, I'm going to be at their event on stage in September and also um, there's going to be an offer going out to their mailing list as well. So you know, I'd, I'd have never dreamt of anything like that happening. It is a very large mailing list. So it just shows that you've just got to keep going. It's just, you know, that next step you take is can be mm. the game changer. So, yeah, just don't give up even when yeah. things aren't always going to plan no and I think that's a testament to your character Danny because you know you haven't given up at all over the last two years and I know that obviously like everybody there's there's highs and lows and ups and downs and brick walls that you have to smash through and um, Mm -hmm. you've just kept on smashing through them and uh, you know FIRST is the acronym we use for leverage and T is for time and uh, of course now you're you're using your ability to really maximize your time and help others with productivity um, but you mentioned on our Q&A last night that you had a call with your coach, John Dale. And, uh, you know, r- maybe you could just share with us, you know, how you thought he hadn't had a very good month. But then John kind of helped you realise all the things that he had been doing. 
I know I need to drink my own medicine a lot more <laughs> sometimes. It's just, you know, I, I keep track and it's it, everything I do to be productive is about keeping track of things. And I think it's just constantly trying to keep your own expectations in check. So, yeah, with John, you know, I fill in my pre-call form of you know what I've achieved that month. And I think I'd written a paragraph to say, oh, you know, not that much has happened this month. But then I went on to list everything that had happened. And all he had to do was just read it back to me for me to go, oh, yeah, OK. Yeah, no, it has been a good month. Um, and I think it was actually that month I'd had less time. The day job had been crazy, crazy busy. But what I had done is get some of those relationships in place, which means now that I've got a really good platform to launch and it was the accumulation of all of the effort of probably 18 months worth of effort that's led to that opportunity. But actually it didn't take that much time to bring that opportunity to life. It took a couple of emails and a phone call. So I think, yeah, it felt like the effort hadn't, been the same as previous months but actually when you look at the outcome it was phenomenal (laughs) yeah yeah so you definitely do fit a lot into the time and as you said working a full-time job two children husband lots of demands but you're still managing to take action every month so that's great so we're moving through the roadmap now Danny and we're on to the final step of stage two so that's step six which is strategy so we've heard the pillars that you've engaged. We've heard where you found leverage. So let's dive into some of the strategies that have helped you increase your thermometer over the last few months. Um, So perhaps starting with the property pillar, what strategy have you followed there? So with property, it's been BRR, um, which is the buy, refurbish, rent, um, and actually refinance. So it's almost the BRRR. (laughs) Um, So yes, that has over so I had another property complete this year and so I'm now up to a total of 658 pounds a month on my thermometer so that has been really good to just learn the ropes on you know a couple of smaller projects and the second project was significantly more complex than the first and looking to move into holiday lets as the next strategy under property to really give that income a boost excellent and then well we've so many other pillars to choose from right so you've you mentioned the (laughs) pension pillar so i guess the strategy there was to create your SaaS, and then that sort of led into a strategy now of investment by the sounds of things and um and then the business pillar um strategy is is building your brand and um developing an online training course yes yeah. Yeah. So there's been, yeah, building a Facebook group. There's been running, you know, masterminds and all sorts to just test all of the content. So that I guess that's why it's taken so long, but it's been such an amazing process to go through. When I look back at the first version of the course to where it is now, I'm just so confident. Um, and it was definitely the right thing to do to go through that. I know people launch courses within weeks sometimes, but yeah, that's a beta version, really. So I think I'm going to be bringing to market something really solid. Um, and you know, by the time I get started, it will be almost two years in the making when it launches. So yes, that's been really good. So I'm hoping to see a, um, I will see <laughs> a, a, a boost of income from that um, when that launches later in the year. Yeah, looking forward to that very much. Okay. So we're now moving into stage three of the roadmap, and this is all about building assets. And it begins with step seven, which is focus. So once someone's chosen a strategy, Danny, then the key is to follow the wheel of wealth. And we know that means education, support, connections, due diligence, and then taking guided action. And that's where our wealth coaches are there every month to help you stay laser focused and turn the wheel. So what benefits have you gained, Danny, from following this process and having that accountability every month? Yeah, for me, it's really good. Um, You know, as I said, I made some costly mistakes before joining Wealth Builders and that lends itself completely to my wealth dynamic, which is Star Creator Supporter, where I just tend to go with my gut. So it has 
just brought the right processes in place and just is a sounding board if nothing else to be honest like depending on the call sometimes it is a bit more strategic but sometimes it's just the opportunity to talk to someone who gets it and that's one of the biggest benefits of not just the wealth coach but the whole community is that you've got a safe place to talk about this stuff it's not really the type of thing you talk about down the pub um you know there's I don't know if it's just a British thing but you know there's this thing about you can't really talk about how much you earn you can't really talk about too much of what's going really well it's it's so it's just so nice to have that community and the support of a coach who's completely aligned knows the whole thing you you know they know everything about what you're trying to achieve what you're working on so that in itself is so so helpful yeah yeah no that's good and uh, yeah I know a lot of good friendships and relationships have been developed from the wealth builders community and uh, we've barely had a chance to even meet face to face have we over the last 15 <laughs> months or so so looking forward to that indeed all right step eight now is is results and we know that results uh, come in lots of different shapes and uh, and sizes. So, of course, we have the wealth chart, you know, up on the wall. We've got the wealth thermometer there. Um, but recurring income doesn't happen every month. We know that um, you have to put the work in. And uh, sometimes there's months where there's different types of results. You know, perhaps it's contacts that you've made. It's uh, just general boost in confidence. So mm-hmm. obviously this year has been good for you, Danny. So what are some of the results that you've had? So I think I've mentioned them. I think the key thing has been, I think the key, the biggest win for me has been securing this relationship um, and all leveraging that relationship that's going to really help me with the course launch because I think anyone that's created some sort of content knows that it could be the best content in the world, but if no one knows about it, you're not going to be able to sell it. So that has been huge and it's just been yeah having yourself as well as that sounding board and that knowledge with IP that's just really helped me to kind of keep going and focusing on just taking the next steps and not getting too overwhelmed with you know the bigger picture and what we're trying to achieve with that um but yes I I think I, I just feel like whatever I want to focus on next there's the knowledge and the contacts that I need to take those steps and to ensure that I don't make costly mistakes <laughs> yeah and and how much have you added to your thermometer this year so far Danny um so this year it's at uh, 658 pounds um, fantastic so, brilliant great result great result okay final step is step nine and this is accelerate So we know that this stage is all about implementation, stage three, and this can lead into year two, year three, all the way to year five is just constantly refining the process, turning multiple wheels. But to accelerate yourself towards financial independence is obviously compounding those efforts, turning multiple wheels. And um, for most people, the journey, um, as we say, you know, it takes several years. But what do you see as being key in helping you continue to stay focused and to take the necessary steps to reach your own financial goals, Danny? I think it's just yeah, staying focused on the end goal. Um, and I think, as I said at the beginning, enjoying the process. I feel the level of desperation has gone. And I feel everyone that you get overexcited at first when you start something new, don't you? And you, you have these huge visions of things happening much quicker than they're actually going to happen. And, you know, you can decide to hate your day job and resent it and, you know, all of those things. And it's just actually, that's, that's not, you've got to enjoy the journey. It's going to take a while. You've got to trust the process. I completely trust that, I will be able to achieve what I want to achieve for me personally. You know, some will do that on just one pillar or one strategy. And for me, I feel as the breadwinner for my family, it's always been really important for me to have two strong sources of income before I even consider getting out of the rat race. Um, I feel like that's the sensible thing to do. You know, who knows what will happen with property or you know, something could happen. And I, the worst thing 
that I can think of is getting myself out of the rat race and then ending up in a position where I need to go and get a job again. <laughs> so that is not an option. So I will really focus primarily on property and the business stroke IP as the primary focus to get me to where I need to be and then I've got other things obviously going on in the background as well um, with SAS and that sort of thing that I'll be able to also leverage. Yeah and um, as I said before you're such a great contributor in the community Danny always in there in the Facebook group and uh, your name's always popping up amongst other members for the help and support that you're there providing and of course you know you've recorded the the goal mapping module in the academy program so for anyone who's a, a current member who's been mapping out their vision for the future they'll be familiar with you uh, obviously in that section as well so thank you very much for contributing to the program no worries at all i think it's a great and simple tool that everyone can use yeah good well look danny so good to hear your journey so far and um we're only halfway through this year so i can't wait yeah. to see what uh what's going to take place in the next six months so uh thanks once again for sharing today with us thanks for all your support and to the wider team as well 